In three, two, one. Seven things you probably didn't know, you need to know. I'm Jamie East and this, this is the Smart Seven. Well, good morning. It's Wednesday the 15th of December and it's International Tea Day. And a big happy birthday to Don Johnson, Rachel Brosnan, Michelle Dockery and Stuart Townsend. There were 59,610 new cases of COVID-19 yesterday, the highest daily number since January, and close to 5,000 of those are officially Omicron variant. The growth in cases comes as more than half a million booster shots were administered on Monday. There was good news and bad news on the travel front as Health Secretary Sajid Javid has announced all 11 countries on the travel red list will be removed as of this morning. The three-week ban was intended to slow the spread of Omicron, but it clearly failed. Now that there is community transmission of Omicron in the UK, the travel red list is now less effective in slowing the incursion of Omicron from abroad. So I can announce today we will be removing all 11 countries from the travel red list effective from 4am tomorrow morning. And as the booster programme looks like it'll struggle to reach the target of a million doses a day, Deputy Prime Minister Dominic Raab says every effort is being made. I appreciate there have been some some teething problems as we ramp this up. That's, but we have had on Saturday half a million people uh, get their booster. Um, so I, I think that's important. I think that's good news. Um, and we'll keep straining every sinew to make sure we can reach that target. Parliament voted on a string of new measures intended to slow the Omicron wave, including face masks and the use of vaccine passports as part of Boris's Plan B. It didn't go well for the embattled PM as 99 Tory MPs voted against his measures, but thanks to Labour's patriotic support, the legislation passed. The eyes to the right, 441. The nose to the left, 41. So the eyes have it, the eyes have it, unlock. However, Labour leader Sakir Starmer wasn't exactly congratulating Boris on the victory. Well, this is a very significant blow to the already damaged um, authority of the Prime Minister. These public health measures would not have gone through if Labour hadn't shown the leadership that the Prime Minister failed to show by voting in the public interest. That's what we did, and it was because of our votes that these measures went through. In the United States, as the January the 6th committee continues their investigation into the events of the Capitol riot, Donald's former chief of staff, Mark Meadows, has been held in contempt of Congress after he initially cooperated, handed over documents and then changed his mind. What he handed over has been a treasure trove of evidence against the former president, including a very treasonous PowerPoint and plenty of text messages received on the day of the Capitol riots from well-known names. Multiple Fox News hosts knew the president needed to act immediately. They texted Mr. Meadows, and he has turned over those texts. Quote, Mark, the president needs to tell people in the Capitol to go home. This is hurting all of us. He is destroying his legacy, Laura Ingram wrote. Please get him on TV, destroying everything you have accomplished. Brian Kilmeade texted. Now Washington DC has announced a civil lawsuit against the Proud Boys and other extremist groups involved in January the 6th. A Bradford court unanimously found Savannah Brockhill guilty of punching 16-month-old Star Hobson to death on Tuesday. The child's mother, Frankie Smith, was cleared of murder and manslaughter but was found guilty on the charge of causing or allowing the death of a child. Local social services apologised for missing the signs that led to a child's life being cut cruelly short. It was an horrific case with details of the injuries inflicted by the amateur boxer and security guard shocking even experienced police detective Chief Superintendent Mark Swift. No child should ever suffer as Star suffered and particularly not at the hands of those that are supposed to be caring for them and love them the most. I want to pay tribute to my investigation team who worked tirelessly in very difficult situation and very emotional circumstances to bring the evidence together and secure these verdicts today. Still to come on the Smart 7, David Tennant has your Christmas TV sorted and Keanu Reeves gets ready to go viral again right after this. You're listening to the Smart 7. If you're enjoying it, you might also like the Smart 7 Island Edition. Just search and follow us on your favourite podcast platform.
There were two games in the Premier League last night after Man United versus Brentford had to be rescheduled following a COVID outbreak. Norwich City under new manager Dean Smith took on Aston Villa under new manager Steven Gerrard and it ended 2-0 to Stevie G's boys. Meanwhile, Man City took on Leeds and took them apart with a 7-0 win with six different scorers filling their boots. Manager Pep Guardiola was happy to see the goals roll in. This club build or buy players to to be creative players, you know. My job is let, just ask them run. <laughs> but the rest, the quality of the club to buy these players make the difference. And we didn't score much goals this season, but uh, today was a good, a good yeah, run to, to be close to Liverpool and Chelsea. Two. Keanu Reeves must surely be one of the most loved movie stars on the planet, apart from the possible exception of Betty White, I guess. He's been a star for so long and tremendously successful, but he still takes the subway and famously donates huge sums to charity on a regular basis. He popped up with Stephen Colbert as he promotes The Matrix Resurrections, and Stephen had a peculiar question. Why is he the star of so many memes? You have such a distinct character of your own, and yet people kind of lay on you meaning. You know what I mean? They lay meaning on... Meme on me when you're not strong, and I'll be your friend. I'll help you care. There you go. finished planning your Christmas TV yet? Have you got the old Radio Times out, your favourite Sharpie and circled the big shows? Or are you just going to surf your way through a food coma? Well, here's one that's worth circling. It's the age-old story of Phileas Fogg going around the world in 80 days, but it's been rebooted and now stars David Tennant. It starts on Boxing Day and it's an eight-parter. David popped up on The One Show to give us the quick rundown on what we need to know. Well, he's a particular sort of Victorian gent who's not really ever done anything with his life. And in, in, in a moment of madness, he decides he's going to head off and try and make it around the world in 80 days. He's very ill-suited towards it. Uh, he's temperamentally the wrong choice for such a, an adventure. But, but, it, but he goes on anyway, and luckily he has two uh, rather bolder travelling companions who, who might just help him make it. This has been the Smart 7. Wherever you're listening, do us a favour and hit the follow button. We'll be back tomorrow at 7 a.m. Have a great day. Written, produced, and published by Daft Doris.